Coming up on this episode of the Preston North End Weekend Warm Up, we'll look ahead to the FA Cup visit of Huddersfield Town. We'll look back at the top goals of 2022, and Scott Laird shares his memories of a famous FA Cup night at Deepdale. All this and so much more, it can only be the Preston North End Weekend Warm Up. A very happy new year to you and a warm welcome to the first Preston North End Weekend Warm Up of 2023. And where else could we start than the first match of the new year and the first win? An away win at Stoke City. Let's remind you about how good the late, 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 late win actually was. Johnson looks like he's the favourite. Then it's Brown who does hit it and he hits it just wide. He's appealing for a corner but uh, isn't going to get it. Baker picks it up though, he's been forced out wide, he's got time into the left of him. It's Thompson to the right, and it's said this time towards Timon, and a chance this time, stopped on the line, but uh, I think the offside flag has gone up. Hughes gets it away and manages to find a bit of safety, but only for a brief second. Hughes gets to it again as it's clawed back this time. Oh, another what big save. save from Freddie Woodman, the goalkeeper. Fox sends it forward again. Powell is the target and he won the header too. It's knocked down towards De Lapp, who sends it, what, five yards out from goal, wide. A great opportunity to perhaps win it late in the day, but Delap unable to take it. Suta's missed a chance here, could be Ben Woodburn, and it's a great save from the goalkeeper. Well, Suta had misjudged it, and Ben Woodburn found himself through one-on-one. -on -one. Laron with the outside of his boot, tries to cross it in, could drop for Clark, who steps it forward, and uh, then can't find an end product, and it's Fernandez this time. Daniel Johnson's in lots of space through the middle here. Fernandez trying to get past Small, does the right thing. and he does the right thing. He continues his run now. Woodburn waits in the middle. Evans is arriving late as well. Can Evans get there? Oh, it's just agonisingly away from him. But Adam Brown backs up play and reaches it. He tries to find Johnson, who lets it run past him, and now it's McCann just over the bar. In front of the away end, North End trying to win it. And it's Alan Brown with the corner kick. And sends it in, it's Evans who flicks it on, and they yes! score! It's Chad Evans who's won it right at the very end! The free kick routine works perfectly, and Chad Evans is the hero who celebrates the win, and what a way to start the new year! Right, let's just park the championship for a moment because it's FA Cup this weekend. Huddersfield Town, again, the visitors to Deepdale. And we thought we'd remind you of some recent magic. I say magic, how close we were when the second half kicked off against Manchester United. Super Scott Laird scored that goal. And for just a moment, we were all dreaming of another I don't know, Arsenal moment, which probably also ended in a similar way. But you know what I mean, so who else could we talk to but the man with the pound from his nan, Scott Laird. As Blitz tries to play it upfield again. Doesn't find Rooney though, Kevin Davis flicks it on towards Garner. Preston have started running this second half, and Laird's running in towards the penalty area. He shoots, deflected, and Preston have scored! Preston are in front of the start of the second half! It's Scott Laird who scores! And what a famous goal it could be in the FA Cup for Preston North End. A sellout goal that certainly has got everybody on their feet here. And Scott Laird is the hero right at the beginning of the second half with only a couple of minutes on the clock. It's Preston North End 1, Manchester United 0. Oh, I, don't, I, I don't like to talk about the goal, but if you do want to talk about it, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have to twist your arm too much, am I? <laughs> no, that, you're not. You're not. That was some night, wasn't it? What do you remember of the night in a hole? Um, I've talked about it a few times. I actually, I was that excited for the game, I forgot to eat. And me and my wife, Leanne, were driving to the game. And I, I was like, oh my God, I've forgotten to eat. So I actually, we actually pulled into McDonald's and I hid in the back and got down so no one could see me because I was using my full Preston tracksuit. And um, I think we got a, I got a double cheeseburger, I think, just to put something in my belly, just to get something in me, because I was thinking, I haven't eaten, I'm that excited. And um, managed to do 
all right that game. So I didn't I didn't repeat it. Don't worry, I didn't repeat it. I didn't keep getting McDonald's before every game. No, but it could be the secret because Ryan Lowe said this week that he thought half jokingly the apple crumble and custard could actually <laughs> have been the secret to the late win against those City. So maybe it is. Maybe we should start thinking about a Mackey's and a and a wholesome pudding. Yeah, correct. I think um, our sponsors are Western and McDonald's as well. So do you get a special it all ties card? in, doesn't it? Do you get a gold no, card? I wish. I you wish. I wish I did. Got gold cards. People of your That's ilk, right. lad. <laughs> so look, apart from the McDonald's for your main meal, which I'm sure would be frowned upon in today. By the way, this couldn't be better timing. <laughs> Case just come home. <laughs> Brilliant. Coincidentally, this is a chicken sandwich, though, uh, which I, again, this was just for comedy purposes. I would never <laughs> eat McDonald's either. Yeah. Well, other than the meal, the McDonald's meal, what else do you remember? Um, the game was still a bit of a blur. Um, obviously, the goal, the goal happened in slow motion. I remember, I remember hitting it and then it going in thinking, oh, expletives, I've scored. And then by that time, I was, I was jumping over the, the advertising boards and I saw Deepdale Duck coming towards me. So I, I thought, I, I jumped in the crowd and I thought, no, I can't jump in the crowd, I get booked. So I turned and ran towards my family, my wife in the, <laughs> in the corner there. And, and then all of a sudden, everyone was jumping on me. I think Joe Garner was trying to snog me and Bailey Wright was trying to stick fingers where he shouldn't have been. <laughs> Things like that, yeah. So, and then I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I remember being on the bottom saying, lads, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, get off me. And then Gally, Gally grabbing me and just hugging me and saying, what have you done? What have you done? We could win. If we win, you're going to be a legend. Um, and then obviously, but in my eyes, we won because VAR was around. Rooney dived and he, a Fellaini or Herrera's offside and then one of Fellaini or Herrera handballed it as well. So in my head, we won 1-0. We were robbed. Well, in my heart, Correct. we also won 1-0 as well. So, in, I mean, it was a great night and we want that to be the norm, but it still feels very special moments like that. Does North End still have a special place in your heart as well? Not just for that, but just for the for the three years that you were with us? Oh, huge. Not just as a football club, but a place to live. It was, it was the first time me and my wife um, lived together, We've got a house together and we still got really close family and friend, oh, friends, friends, considering friends and family, sorry. Um, you being one, Fabers, you know that. Um, Torsten Stuckman and his family you know, we became really close to them um, and, and we've still got really good friends out there who we're going to we come up and see very often or they come down here as well So, and we'll hopefully be up there soon I'll try and catch a game when I come and visit them so yeah footballing wise it was one of my favourite favourite clubs along with Stevenage and Warsaw one of my favourite favourite footballing times just what a club you know it's just it, it's geared up to be in that Premier League and I hope one day they can finally get there but training facilities going around the city the fans all the cars with number plates and it's it just it's just when I moved there I knew I was at a big club and I absolutely loved my three years there and I, I wish I could have stayed I, I I have got a slight regret I wish I'd signed that contract that, that Simon Grayson offered me um, but I, I knew I wasn't going to be a, a first choice and I just didn't want to be a I didn't want to be a player that sat on the bench or in the stands I wanted to play football so and base because um, yeah, I do miss it. Your it's at, it's Huddersfield for North End in the FA Cup this weekend. That was your debut game, I think, in the League Cup. I think I'm right in yeah. saying that. What was it that, right. that that made you? Was it? You, I know you said you were sort of it was bigger than maybe you'd expected it to be. I don't know, but what was it that was the initial one? Was it Graham? Was it Graham Wesley that was twisted your arm? Yeah, he was a big part of it, obviously. Um, and John Massino, Beardsley, um, Jozza, Joel Byron moving there. So, yeah, that was, they were big parts of it. But I think I had a few other clubs interested as well, a few big other clubs. But as soon as I came to Preston and, and looked around and saw the ground and just drove up, as you're driving down up, up the motorway and you're coming towards it, you can see the floodlights on in the distance. Because I came in the evening to, to have a look and it just blew my mind. Um, you broke your leg. Obviously, it was it was horrible when that happened. But in terms of because you are you always, and that's why I think we got on so well. You were you were always cup half full, overflowing in terms of being super positive. And during that time, you embraced the opportunity to get involved in the community more, and you and you properly got involved in it, didn't you? It was brilliant. Yeah, I think I think it's a massive thing for any football club, and I think. 
I think today's football world is getting a bit too detached from from the fans. And I think I remember as a young kid um, when I, I went to Plymouth, I was a Plymouth fan, still am a Plymouth fan. And, and the first team coming out after games and talking to you or going to watch them train and, and they got involved. They weren't, they didn't keep themselves away. And I thought, you know, when I, I become a professional, if lucky I am enough one day, that I want to do stuff like that and, and give back and, and be that link, really. So you don't want to be detached. And I think football has started to come away from that. But Preston was was great. The fans were great before the game, after the game, always being there to talk. It, it just helped with Preston because I just think that everyone was so nice up there. They still are, to be fair. And you'd love yeah. Ryan Lowe. Ryan Lowe's your sort of guy as He's well. Guy. You would like Lowe a lot. Um, and if you're going to finish at a football club doing anything, it might as well be getting promotion at Wembley. Was that, that was obviously a pinnacle. Yeah. The, 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 the big two things in my career happened at, at, at Preston, you know, the main United goal. And then the, the biggest thing, the biggest drive in my career was when I, when I left Plymouth at 19, they were in the championship and I went down to Stevenage in the conference. And my whole drive was to get back to the, the championship. And I achieved that with, with Preston. So a massive career goal was achieved with Preston at Wembley. And it was a, a really special day. Um, God, I couldn't start because I played virtually every game of that season. And then um, I missed the playoff semi-final, second leg, and then and then the final. Um, I remember the gaffer putting me on, Simon Grayson, going, you deserve this, lady. On you go. I was like, yeah, of course I deserve it. I played every game. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, yeah get me on. But um, he was great. I understood exactly the reasons why he did it. And it was the right thing to do because we won 4-1 and we got... It wasn't me. It wasn't about me. It was about Preston North End and getting us back to where they belong um, in, in the championship. And hopefully now they can really push on and have a good January window and, and push on for those playoffs. I can't let you go without asking you two big questions, obviously, in terms of what you're doing. Now, I know where you are and what you're doing. But remind people where you are. Are you still enjoying football? What are you doing? Where are you doing it? I'm at Western Super Mayor, so we're the equivalent lead to Bamber Bridge, uh, but we're in the southern section, so we feed into the Conference South. Obviously, Bamber Bridge feed into the Conference North. Um, doing really well. Assistant manager there, so I'm still playing. My legs allow me to do it. Playing at left back still, doing really well. Got some really good players, ex-pros here. Top of the league, flying. Um, still scoring goals, still doing the front post run, scoring those flick-ons from corners. Um, got 18 last year from left back, so not bad, eh? Not bad. Um, and loving it really got a really good job at a local school here uh, Millfield so doing really well coach under 18 there so I've got a really good balance uh, really happy with life got a lovely family back near my, my wife's family and my family so yeah it's going really well so you are Western Supermare's version of John Hills aren't you same position goal scoring <laughs> threat still a lovely lad You've got more hair than Hillsy, obviously though it must be said and in terms of all <laughs> those goals we must talk about your lovely granny as well who always used to give you a, a pound every time she scored and that was I think everyone everyone loves Scott Laird I mean people would be nodding going of course we all do but I think that was the moment when you got to the post-match game and rather than it being about you you told everybody about how your granny gave you a pound yeah another reason like I've said previously I think it's I've been lucky enough to live that dream but for me the greatest happiness it's brought me is is what it's brought to people I know, um, the fans, my my nan who's sadly passed away now, all my family, and and letting them have some limelight as well because I wouldn't be I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved without them. So for my nan, my mum's taken that mantle now. She gives me the pound every time I score, um, and my brothers. So my brother, my my youngest brother, doing really well this year as well. He's on thirteen from right back. So. He's, she's paying out a bit of money this year. This already, has been so. an expensive year or so, hasn't it? Yeah, so family. far. Yeah. <laughs> Good Scotty, job we're not strikers. It's, it, well, exactly. And there's plenty of them in the country at the moment, but let's not get political. Right, folks? Um, <laughs> always lovely to see you. Thank you for spending some time. I know you've got to take training now, so thanks very much. And, and I'm going to get back to my McDonald's and hopefully I can, <laughs> I can score a goal against Manchester United as well. So cheers. Travers, it's a pleasure to always speak to you and good luck. Well, 2022 has gone, but it's certainly not forgotten. And certainly not the goal. Some crackers throughout the year and a year of progress under Ryan Lowe. Let's remind you of some of those highlights from 2022. Daniel Johnson here crossing. And he crosses it in towards Potts! That's a volley! 
And that's what Brad Potts can do. A sensational equaliser. And he goes straight into the away end to celebrate with the fans. Brad Potts with an unbelievable reply. And they have the opportunity this time. And it's with Pring, the defender, who has gone a long way there. But Ali McCann takes the ball away from him. Excellent work there from the midfielder. Now, perhaps the very last chance for North End. And it's Potts, who's got a lot to do here to reach it. But he has got to it. And he pulls the cross in. And it's Reese! Yes! Oh, you cannot believe it! You cannot believe it! Unbelievable from Emil Reis. Wow! And this could be a counter attack for North End. They've got bodies streaming forward. It comes out towards Cameron Archer here. Can he find the finish? He can! Cameron Archer has done it for North End in the West Lancashire Derby. The deadlock is broken, and it's Archer who has found the bottom corner. to what it means it's a breakaway strike to put by a low side in front it's Preston North End 1 Blackpool 0 what a counter attack by Preston North End Keshi Anderson thinks he gets fouled referee was having none of it and then it's all about the counter attack Whiteman crossing into the far post this time Neils comes and punches it away good uh, goalkeeping from him as Brad Potts puts it back in there again good shot for Brad Hughes goes on the overlap from Brady, who crosses it into the penalty area, and it's... Uh, yes! And on the volley, and he scores! <laughs> and North End have the lead here at Kenilworth Road, and it's Brad Potts who's done it again. Two goals in two games for him, and it silenced the home crowd here this afternoon. Just what Ryan Lowe on his side wanted, it's Luton Town nil, Preston North End 1. Yeah, it's a fantastic ball into the box. I thought he'd um, missed the centre forward because we couldn't see from the stanchion, but uh, it, was a, it looked like a great finish. Um, and Andrew Hughes made an overlap, give you a little bit of space for the cross, and then it was a lovely delivery in. Great, brilliant. McGree jumps underneath the ball. Whiteman puts the pressure back on. There's a nudge in the back. He comes through. And Mel Reese crashes it in! At Preston North End level! Emil Reese's hot streak against Borough continues. And North End hit back much as their play has deserved. It's Preston North End 1, Middlesbrough 1. Woodburn steadies it and waits for the cavalry to arrive. Eventually pirouettes on it and sends it out to the right. Evans is forward. Evans into the oh. box. Gets oh. away. And Chet Evans, well, he waits for one and two come across on one night. Chet Evans, his second of the night. And Preston North End retake the lead. He's waited an age to break his goal drought. And in one night, has two. It's Reading one, Preston North End two. That's a much needed run of form for him as well because he might be able to add to it. Here's Daniel Johnson. Oh, brilliant. Laying it off towards Whiteman. Goal! Oh. It's incredible. It's a brilliant goal from the Lily Whites, who are pulling clear now in the Lancashire Derby here at Ewood Park. A fine, fine goal. And what a day this is turning out to be here in the snow. And if you liked that, you are going to love what is in store. Coming soon, you've got the lot from 2022. Keep your eye out in all the usual places, dropping soon. Right, let's have another rewind to 2014. Another bit of FA Cup magic. Trip to Portman Road, not so good. First half back at Deepdale for the replay, not so good. Second half, cue Joe Garner. Kenny keeps hold of it though, and juggling it away from Paul Anderson and now he's going to play it cross field, looking here for Humphrey, who does well to take it, really good take as well, he can cross into the penalty area, Davis trying to arrive, just over his head though. The supporters in the 54th minute are uh, making their mark and paying their tribute 
to Preston North End supporter Mick Murphy. And as the cross comes in towards the penalty area, Clark tries to reach it, Rudd's missed it, the goal is gaping, and there's the goal, and Frank Noble has scored, and Ipswich have got the lead. In towards the penalty area, headed away by Carlos Edwards, and uh, given away as uh, Gallagher gets there, and he hits it with his right foot, and it goes just over the top. Gallagher now with the corner on the left-hand side, in towards the far post, as Garner knocks it down, and it's cleared off the line. Well, surely, yes it is, Preston have scored, they level at uh, Joe Garner's header. And now Preston with their tails up are coming forward with Gallagher, crossing in towards the penalty area again. It's uh, brought down by Garner, in towards the penalty area, Garner! What a goal! Fabulous goal from Joe Garner! Route one stuff, brilliant control, fabulous finish, and Preston have turned it around. Humphrey here on the uh, right-hand side, crossing in towards the, uh, the penalty area. Garner trying to get there, he's being pulled down. Well, uh, it looked like he was, and the shot over the top from Kevin Davis. Edwards here on the uh, right-hand side, trying to get in on his uh, left foot, crossing it in towards the penalty area. McGoldrick's header, a first touch from the substitute, has equalised for Ipswich. This second half is going goal crazy. Still pressing, we've got everyone in the penalty area. Holmes here crossing it in, Garner going up for it, and Garner trying to get there too, turning away from the defender. Here's Garner! What a goal! He's done it again! Hatrick complete for Joe Garner! The substitute has put Preston North End into the fourth round of the FA Cup. Right, let's look forward to the game this week and then the visit of Huddersfield Town and the view from right here at Exton. Let's hear from Bambo DRB. DRB, so good they named him twice. And the manager, Ryan Lowe. I love it. FA Cup, uh, FA Cup weekends, uh, magical moments. Um, I'm something that we want to make magical and getting into the fourth round. Uh, we know it's going to be tough. A tough team standing there away. We've had some good form of late and obviously beat us last time round. You want to try and put that right, of course. Uh, but yeah, really looking forward to an exciting weekend of FA Cup. Yeah, for me, uh, right now, it doesn't matter the competition for me. So I just want to win. Uh, I'm fighting for that and I think everyone in the, in the dressing room have the same mentality. So we don't care about which cup is because we have a winning mentality, everyone, we, want, we, are, we are training so hard for that and we want to, to keep that uh, the level higher because the way where we want to go, we need that, we need that mentality, we need to keep fighting for, for go up because uh, the supporters deserve that. No, look, it's a good test, isn't it? You know, there's always challenges along the way and, you know, they're going to pose a different challenge, whatever team or squad they bring. Um, and, and the same as us, you know, it's good now and knowing now that what they did to us last time, can we make sure that doesn't happen again? And we've got to make sure that we can do the right things because I thought there were some moments in the game were very good and there was some that was all right. But we know next time when you play them teams that you've got to make sure you be better than you was last time round, and that's going to be certainly the case. I just keep working for the team. I keep working because uh, I know my opportunity is coming. So, but the lads is, it was playing very well. So, in situations like that, the only thing what you can do is to learn, to learn, learn every game, learn in the bank. Doesn't matter what you are. And after when you are in the pitch, try to to put yourself in uh, to do the best, and that's what I what I do. OK, let's just wrap everything up in a nice, neat bow and give you the first present of the new year. A reminder, 12.30 kickoff for the FA Cup, which means number one, Fan Zone, is open from 10.30 and it's still open after the game as well. If you want to go but you haven't got your tickets, mypne.com, they're cheap, cheap as chips, cheap as cheap chips, in fact, £10, £5, have a look on there, you can print them out. Or, if that's not your thing, get to the ticket office before the game. 12.30 kickoff. Don't say you haven't been warned. If you can't get to Deepdale, I follow p &E. And, as always, please like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, leave a nice message if you like. Nothing about cryptocurrency, though, because I don't get it. So anyway, that's all for now. See you in the next episode. And until then, come on, you whites!